unfascinating is how no matter what community you're in there's always people who view a game differently i really love video games for that right you're totally allowed to holy crap did i not turn my game down it just went shot back up just shot back up anyways there's always you're always allowed to feel and think a certain way about games and it like really changes how each specific individual can view a game right there's like so many different styles to video games that I think um, the levels of the levels of gameplay, whether that be a single player or a multiplayer game, make it so that everyone has a different way that they experience it. Maybe not everyone, but for the vast majority of people, they're not you're not going to experience the game the same way as the person sitting right next to you if your tastes in gaming are different. Uh, and I've seen that with like things like Elden Ring, right, where I don't play it, but I've been like watching a lot of people play it. I like to look at the funny like quotes and things like that. The memes, all the stuff that matters about video games. You know, you don't have to play them. Just understand the culture and the memes, right? Um, with that being said, I think it's really funny seeing how people get upset about newer Dark Souls-esque players, new FromSoft players, right? They're like, oh my gosh, you're using all the magic and the summons. Hey, what I mean, Buffalo? Using all the magic and the summons and and all these broken spells, you're not a real Dark Souls player. You're not running around with a great sword and a bow and just like actually playing the game. You're you're using all of these broken new cheap tactics, right? All the all the summons. Apparently, summoning is really easy. Uh, I don't. I, I can't say for certain, but I've heard a lot of people tell me that. And the same thing with the magic. Like apparently, there's so many like super powerful magic spells that it almost feels like you're not playing a Souls-like game. And I, I find it really funny that so many people are like, dude, this is stupid. This isn't a Souls game. What the fuck? And other people are just like, oh, it's really easy to beat the game that way? Oh, I'll just use it, you know? Um, and that, that reminded me of a very old Magic the Gathering article. And I can relate this to any form of game. Uh, it's about three distinctly different types of players that branch off into each other, right? And you could say the same thing for heart, body, and mind in the old fighting game. Uh, glossary definition, right? So this is about Johnny, Timmy, and Spike. And I found some excerpts from the article because the article itself was really long. It's by the Magic the Gathering creator, Richard Garfield. He wrote this article a very, very, very long time ago. Um, but so when when you think of like players, you can you can see that player, you can see that form of player, that type of player in one of these three definitions that I'm going to read out to you guys. Let me go ahead and pull it up. I got a lot smaller. This got a lot bigger. You can't see my cool little subscribe or gift to subscription to make me to hop everything. Anyways, it's talk segment time. So um, there is there is three different distinct types of players in this article, right? The article that I'm quoting from, it was an old Richard Garfield article. He refers to people as Johnny's, Timmy's, or Spike's. So we'll start from the bottom because I accidentally copied them backwards the first question i always ask for of a profile is what does this profile want when they play magic the gathering let's put any game in there timmy wants to experience something timmy plays magic the gathering because he enjoys the feeling he gets when he plays what that feeling will be from will vary from timmy to timmy but all timmies have one thing in common and that's they enjoy the visceral experience of playing as you will see, Johnny and Spike have a destination in mind when they play. Timmy is in it for the journey. This is this. This is the definition of a player who just wants to do sick shit. A Timmy just wants to do sick shit. They're not trying to win. They're not trying to lose. They're just trying to pull off their sick 50-50 mix-up after they knock you down with a command throw, right? They just wanna, they wanna experience that. That is their feeling, right? They can get up, look at all that chocolate child. Hey, what's up, Wind? They can get up and get away from the setup if it was a tournament set after they won or lost and say, you know what? I got cooked, but that shit, that shit was sick. I'm very glad that I landed like, oh, okay. I can actually turn that on so we can see the background. There we go. Um. They just want to. They just want to experience the game. They want to experience the game that, the way that they want to play it, and the way they want to play it, for the most part, is by doing something they find cool. They find visceral. You can find that type of player in any game. 
right? So let's let's take a let's take an example. Uh, let's we already said a fighting game, right? And this is about Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering, Timmy's probably just want to summon a really big monster. This this monster right here. This is the main deck of my monster. This is the main monster of my deck. I want to summon this monster. I want to summon this creature, and it's an 11-11 for nine mana with Trample and Life Link, and I just want to summon this thing. It may be hard to get to. You may not always do it, but when you do, you're gonna feel good. That's a Timmy. That's what a Timmy wants to do. Uh, another good example is in a game like Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter players are right, there's there's meta players that want to do the the most optimal way to build their their character and the most optimal way to defeat the monster, right? But then they also there are also players who just say, you know what? I'm using Hunting Horn, and I want to land this buff. Like this is my favorite buff in the game, and I want to land this buff against this monster, right? Even more so, you could say something like mounting the monsters in the newer monster in the game, like Monster Hunter Rise. If I'm not mistaken, you can mount monsters now. Maybe. Maybe, just maybe, you don't get as much resources as you wanted from that monster, but you got the experience of saying, yeah, I made that monster my bitch. I fucking rode that monster. That shit was tight. Timmy's exist in every fighting game. Timmy's exist in every video game. They exist in every card game. Timmy's just want to do something sick. The next one is the Johnny. So let me read the excerpt from the article. It says, so why does Johnny play magic? Because Johnny wants to express something. You have a comms voice? Thank you. To Johnny, magic is an opportunity to show the world something about himself, be it how creative he is or how clever or how offbeat he is. As such, Johnny is very focused on the customizability of the game. Deck building isn't an aspect of the game to Johnny. It's the aspect. So if we look at uh, the definition of a Johnny, right? So Johnny wants to express them. They want to feel as if they are they are innovating. They are showing off their true self. And you can see that. You can feel that in the way a lot of players play a fighting game. Right? Maybe every other Cetrion player in the world is very defensive in the way that they play Cetrion. And they're like, this is how Cetrion is played. This is the meta of Cetrion. Johnny's like, hey, but I think Cetrion can play this way. I want to show you guys how devious and crazy this character can be on offense if you play like this. It can be any character on it, right? But he wants to brew something. He wants to stir something. He wants to cook up something that's different from everyone else. This is the guy who is playing something maybe off meta, right? If you're if you're um, a Yu-Gi-Oh player, right? There's like a good few. I had to win. I had to. There's a good few Yu-Gi-Oh decks right now in Master Duel. Let's use Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel as an example. There's a good few Yu-Gi-Oh decks that are very powerful. Eldlich, Raizu, um, Drytron, right? Those are three of the most powerful decks in the game. A Johnny wants to make that deck differently. He wants to say, you know what? This is how these meta decks function. I think that they can work this way. Let me build this deck in a different way. Let me take this this normal thing and put a spin on it, put a twist on it, make it feel like mine. Don't make it feel cookie cutter. Don't make it feel like it's a net deck, like it's stolen from the internet. Make it feel like my deck. Make it feel like this is exactly how I want it to be. It's a form of expression that maybe the Timmy has just a little bit, but it's not the same as a Johnny. Yeah, I try to do something different and unique. You're, you're, a, Tim, you're a Johnny. You're 100% a Johnny. Maybe you don't play Johnny Cage, you play Cetrion, but you are a Johnny. You want to experience the game in your own way. You have your own flavor and you want to stick to it, right? You don't want to be just another face in the crowd. You want to be bold and stand out. And that's literally, that's exactly what a Johnny is, right? And there are more competitive Johnnies and there are more casual Johnnies that want to do something very cool on a casual level or want to do something very cool on on a on a top level right even when it comes to commentating exactly i like that i like that right you can even say that timmy that johnny's exist in the space of of um of like sports right there are there are rule there are rule makers and there are trendsetters and there are rule breakers there are people who want to break the game to its maximum a perfect example of a johnny for anyone who doesn't know Dribbling was not always originally a part of basketball. The original rule in basketball is that you could not move before you pass the ball to another person. 
So some Johnny out there decided, hey, you know what? Why don't I just pass the ball to myself? And everyone just kind of looked at him like, what? And there he goes, dribbling away, passing the ball to himself, making it so that basketball had a movement option, being unique, being creative, being clever, and discovering something new in the process. The ultimate Johnny, the ultimate def the ultimate form of a Johnny right there. We all have a little of these in us. And I think that this is the one that most competitive players in any game will relate to. So why does a spike play? Spikes play to prove something, particularly how good they are. You see, Spike sees the game as a mental challenge by which he can define and demonstrate their abilities. Spike gets joy. Spike gets their greatest joy from winning because their motivation is using the game to show what they are capable of. Anything less than success is a failure because that yardstick, because that is the yardstick they judge themselves against. Like Timmy, Johnny, Spike has their own subgroups. What separates these subgroups is how Spikes have chosen to try to dominate. Different Spikes focus on different aspects of a game. You want to know what a Spike is? The easiest way to, des to, to describe a Spike to anyone who's ever played a competitive game. We have a, we have a perfect definition for Spikes. A fucking tier whore. Okay. If what you do is at the most optimal level all the time and you say, you know what? I played on pad, but you know what's more, you know what's better than pad? Fucking stick. Which is a stick, bro. Oh shit. You know what's more powerful than stick? Hitbox. It's time I get a fucking hitbox. You have to be the best. You have to prove that you can win. You have to be as meta as possible. You judge yourself based on your wins and your losses. If your loss rate is anything above 0%, you consider yourself a failure. They play the game to win. I'm not a spike. I'm closer. I feel like I'm closer to a Timmy. I just want to do my sick shit. But we all, we all have a little spike in us, right? Just like we all have a little Johnny in us. A spike in another game is something along the lines of someone in Elden Ring. Let's look at Elden Ring, for instance. If you play Elden Ring and you are looking for guides on how to beat each boss in the most optimal way, trying to build your character optimally, pick the best builds, regardless of what people think is broken, cheap, and like stupid to play, if you are trying to play the most optimally you can, you're being a spike at Elden Ring. If you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and your deck is the best deck in the game and it gets nerfed, and you immediately go to the next best deck in the game, you're a spike. And there's nothing wrong with that, to be fair. But these are three definitions that originally were just used for Magic the Gathering. But when you look at a Timmy, a Johnny, and a Spike, you can really see that these three types of players, these three types of video game enjoyers, these two types of people exist in every walk of a hobby, of a job, of a, um, of a experience. These exist in every. There's the trendsetters. There's the people who try to do things optimally and only optimally. And there are the people who do things purely for their enjoyment and experience. Figure out which one of these you are. And if you're watching this on the YouTube, leave it down in the comments. Whatever game you play, whatever games you like, and whatever you take, you know, seriously and love. Tell me, tell me what you think you are on the list of these three. A Johnny, a Timmy, or a Spike. Beanie Thuggish for the YouTubes. Signing out. Peace.